Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Servant of Christ Ministries. Hope and pray you're doing well. Uh, In today's video, I wanted to give a little encouragement to those of you out there who may be seeking to become a Bible teacher online. Uh, I know a lot of people are probably looking at us as YouTubers and holding us in high regard. I get a lot of compliments, a lot of encouragement. Um, But I know that if I was in the audience and I was seeking to be a Bible teacher, I would want one of those guys out there to kind of make a video just for me. And that's what this is. Um, The first thing you want to do when you're becoming a Bible teacher online is make sure your relationship with the Lord is good. Not saying you have to be perfect or flawless. You can't have any mistakes in your lives. But you do want to see a pattern of behavior, a pattern of study, a pattern of prayer. Those kind of things uh, will be the first thing I would advise. The second thing is you want to make sure you take the word of God extremely seriously, Uh, even to the point where some people might find you to be stoic or hard headed sometimes. Uh, And what I mean hard headed is that your stance on keeping the Bible serious um, is strong. Here's why. You're going to have a lot of kickback, especially from false teachers as a servant of Christ, as a teacher of the Bible. And you're going to want to be able to have the courage and the boldness to stand. You want to be able to uh, not be shaken. You know, there are going to be times when you become really nervous, uh, especially when it comes to teaching online. There are times I, I like I tell everybody, every time I come on here, uh, I'm always nervous. I always have stage fright or anything like that. I'm always uncomfortable to some degree uh, teaching online. And and to me, that's a sign that it's important because it means that it means a lot to you. And um, being nervous, being scared, being a person who over prepares, th- those are good traits, but there are also pros and cons to it. So here's the pro to somebody who's always being prepared, right? I take hours and hours to try to formulate the study to make sure everything goes smoothly. I rehearse the study so I don't just come on here and just wing it. Uh, I've repeated it a few times prior to me coming on here. Um, And, you know, those are good things because you're prepared, right? The downfall to that, though, if you are overprepared and that's the only thing you're using, is you don't leave room for the Holy Spirit to guide you. Uh, Sometimes you can be so overprepared that you don't listen to the Holy Spirit because it's not according to the script that you set out. So you have to allow the Holy Spirit to move you. And uh, there are two scriptures uh, that I want to want you to keep in mind. Uh, in the book of Luke, uh, he encourages one of the individuals, let's say, uh, I believe it's a an apostle or a person, right? They said, when they bring you before kings, don't prepare what you're going to say beforehand in that moment, the Holy Spirit will give you what to say. So that doesn't mean that you go on teaching unprepared. You're just like, I'm just going to walk up there and just wing it and let the Holy Spirit guide me. That's that's disrespectful to the word of God. In other words, you should find a balance between the two. All right. First, you should prepare, uh, pray, uh, study. All those things are going to help you in the long run. Uh, also, Allow the Holy Spirit to change direction if need be. Sometimes you can prepare an entire lesson and that lesson can go completely off the the kilter and you start going in another direction. Um, Let the Holy Spirit guide you. There are many times where I've prepared lessons, uh, Bible studies, and right when I sit down um, and based on the conversation or the people I'm talking with, uh, it changes. And that's a lot uh, of, of what happens in apologetics, right? So if you're like, for example, let's just say I'm going to have a conversation with a cult member. I should prepare, right? If Let's say the cult member is a, a Hebrew Israelite and I should have certain things prepared in my mind to say, scriptures kind of queued up, um, but the conversation can completely change directions and you have to allow that to happen. So my thing is prepare, but don't put so much pressure on yourself because then you become a person who relies on yourself versus the word of God. Um, when it comes to preparing Bible studies, I think it's super important to walk through the verses. Uh, not only that, but not only walk through the verses, but then try to explain them out loud. Uh, as, as simple as that may seem, as funny as you may seem trying to explain verses out loud while you're by yourself, uh, it does provide a good opportunity for you to know whether or not you truly understand the material. Um, 
Reason being is because when you talk out loud, sometimes in your brain, you're like, okay, yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. But if I tell you, explain what you just read, that's a different level of understanding. So as a Bible teacher, you want to be prepared. You want to take uh, the necessary steps to convey the information clearly, which is my next point, which is you want to make sure that you are not trying to be deep. You are not trying to sound philosophical and grandiose, right? Using words like, you know, uh, hyperpabalistic. I'm, I'm just being funny, but I'm just saying you don't want to try to sound deep. Now, of course, there are going to be words that you can use that are large, like eschatology. But if you could just dumb down even that that word, right? Eschatology's study of end times. So instead of going on your Bible video saying, you know, um, we're going to study eschatology today people, some people are going to get it, right? And that's okay if you use the word, right? But what if you just said, today we're going to study what the Bible has to say about end times and prophecy. People get that. People understand that. You want to connect with individuals, not try to be over them and to, uh, to, to flex your vocabulary. This does not mean you can't use big words. All I'm saying is know your audience, right? If you're in a room uh, filled with um, individuals who have degrees and, and and stuff like that okay all right maybe you could use you know eschatology and use those words but if you're in an audience sp specifically on youtube and you're trying to just convey the information clearly make it simple don't try to sound deep and you can see a lot of pastors out there false teachers false pastors out there they try to sound deep and they end up making a lot of noise with no kind of foundation set, right? Uh, and this is what false teachers want to do. They want to sound better than the people they're talking to. They want to seem smarter than the individuals they're having a conversation with or, or teaching because they want people to look up to them. They want people to see them as these, you know, larger than life teachers. So they try to sound deep, uh, but they end up just talking over the people. And people sometimes, they just get caught up in, you know, trying to uh, they get caught up in the stardom. It's kind of like uh, maybe you have a, a superstar, right? You have one of those popular artists out there and they seem larger than life, right? Because that's attractive. That's attractive to see something better than you uh, to some degree. And I, I just want to be one of the first ones to tell you, and we've all said it to some degree, all the good apologists out there, we've all said it to some degree. It's not about me. It's not about us. It's about Jesus Christ. As long as you always make the focus of your Bible studies, Jesus, uh, or understanding the context of the chapter and the verse, um, you'll, you know, you'll do great. Um, I'm trying to think of something else. Uh, if you guys have any questions on, on things like, you know, how to do this stuff on YouTube or how to formulate a Bible study the simple way, just hit me up with an email. Uh, if I have the opportunity, I'll do my very best to answer the question best I can. Um, also you want to do it with a level of professionalism. And when I say professionalism is, uh, it's more, don't treat it like a business, but I want you to treat it with respect, right? You want to do the best you can with what you have and push the limits of your creativity. Sometimes creativity, the, the Lord uses individuals who may be very good speakers. Um, be creative with your language. Try to uh, tell stories the same way Jesus did, where he illustrated things in a way that the people can grasp and understand. You want people to walk away from your Bible study, not saying, okay, I'm done. They, you want them to walk away and say, I want to study some more. You want them to be motivated to study the word of God, right? You don't want to demotivate them. I guess the last thing I would say uh, just to help you guys out there is um, two things, two things. The first thing is what you say, well, I guess this is both parts. What you say will have one or two effects. Number one, it will draw people closer to God or draw people away from God. That also goes with your behavior and your actions. Right? You don't want to be the individual who tells the truth about the Bible, but then in your life, you're doing the opposite right? because you're going to drive people away from God. I mean, you have individuals who used to be part of churches who saw very bad examples and they blame God for that. You don't want to be the individual who's responsible for that. You want to be the individual who is responsible for saying, you know, I, I saw his example. He was true to what he said or she was true to what she said. And, you know, they lived it out. Uh, and I'm, I admire that and I'm, I want to serve the Lord in that way. That's the kind of reaction you want. So make sure you are honest. So again, what you say has one or two effects, either you will pull people to God or push them away. You don't want to be the individual who pushes them away. 
Um, with that said, I just wanted to uh, thank you guys for your support on a constant basis. I just wanted to put this message out there for individuals who are looking to maybe begin doing Bible studies online and things like that. Uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, if I can help in any way, you can either put it in the comments section below, or you can email me directly at servantofchristministries at gmail.com. And maybe I'll make another video uh, just kind of helping you through the process. Anyway, God bless you guys. Take care, and I will see you during the next study. Peace out.